Hello everyone, uh, it's Richard here with a very special edition of uh, Panzer Corps. Um, I'm going to show you Viasma in a way that has never been done before. Uh, everything you should know is that I didn't reload for this scenario. Uh, I have a historic core. I won't go into the great detail about that in this video. All you need to know is I have a Luftwaffe division, I have an SE division, that acts as a shock division, and I have a regular Panzer Corps that's a support corps, or a, a Panzer division that supports uh, uh, the shock troops. So that's all you need to know about that. <clears throat> um, I have no particular heroes of note outside of uh, I got a defense plus two on Kesha, and I got an attack plus four on one of my on my fifteen centimeter gun. Uh, so I don't really have remarkable heroes. So I'll, I'll, I'll make mention of that. <clears throat> Uh, the other thing is the Field Marshal and Rommel effect are in play in my Grand Campaign attempt here. Uh, and I'm doing that to gather some statistics to figure out, see if I can figure out some causality between the relationship between experience and prestige spending, and potentially the relationship between prestige spending and other things. Uh, but that's not really important for this video. So... <clears throat> For uh, Viasma, th there's three very, very important facts about this scenario. I think it's three. Um, I overstrengthened key units because I want to have the, the, the momentum of my attack continue without being delayed. And I think it's pretty important for the Viasma map to do this. Um... The overstrength is maybe a bit much. I think you could do with a little bit less and still be fine. This is an historic core. Uh, what's the third thing? Oh, uh, I'm going to do something. I'm going to show you something I did that, that I was told could not be done. Uh, I, I've heard people say it's impossible. I think Deductor would absolutely, incomprehensibly be floored by what I'm about to do. But in Deductor's defense, a key linchpin of my strategy is that I am using Rondorf and Kesha to do something very, very smart. And he could not do that in his playthrough because he didn't have hero units. So the caveat to this is you're going to have to overstrengthen some key units. You're going to need your hero units. And primarily you need Rondorf and Kesha to pull off what I'm going to do. Uh, and you also need a bridging engineer. <clears throat> uh, I have... Um, had a bridge engineer since I upgraded uh, my regular pioneer, uh, my regular infantry to a bridge engineer sometime in 1940, and I've been using him regularly in combat, like a combat unit, and he's been very, very impressive. I'm very happy with him, but I can go over that later. So uh, my, so what I'm going to show you here is a map wipe. I'm going to map wipe Viasma in a repeatable way with an historic core. So there's a couple of things uh, you should also note is my historic core is a little bit weaker in artillery support than Bracada's, <clears throat> even though maybe we have about the same amount of artillery. Uh, the other thing you should note is because of the field marshal effect, Rudel is not three stars on this map. I, I have Rondorf at less than two stars. Uh, so <clears throat> like my units are not going to be as strong as if I was playing on Rommel which actually just makes my approach even better. So uh, what I did here was very Napoleon-esque. Um, I have essentially one, two, three, four. I have five attack groups uh, for this. Actually, this, this map is pretty, uh, let, me, let me let it go. Here we go. So um, I also lowered the movement speed to go as slow as possible. So here's the map. So I have my elite SE uh, units in the south, and they're going to basically try to move as fast as they can to seize this area, and then they're going to uh, fend off a counterattack from this region. That's pretty normal. That's pretty standard. And then I'm going to have uh, a cavalry unit a Panzer II and a, a 10 centimeter gun, go north and take these two objectives, and then their next goal is to move this way and take out the anti-aircraft gun. After they have taken out the anti-aircraft gun, 
Their next goal is to keep moving west and don't even bother with any other objectives. And uh, <clears throat> one of them is going to, I think the cavalry unit will seize this northern objective and the Panzer II will block this hex. Okay, so th that's like uh, two battle groups. The third thing I did is I sent a paratrooper with a level bomber to the back. The paratrooper drops on the airfield, and, th and then the next turn he goes back up in the air, and he drops in this region, and then a level bomber and a paratrooper take out the artillery and the anti-tank. It's guaranteed to work. Don't worry about it. The only thing you have to watch out for is weather. So the ideal scenario is the first three turns are rain, which you're not going to hear me say very often, but the first three turns of rain actually benefits you, and you can exploit that to the max. Um, uh, I actually find that it's a little more difficult to pull off my plan if it's a cloudy day or a clear day, but you can still do it. You just have to drop your paratroopers safely out of range of the airfield. And the good thing about my plan for Moscow is it doesn't matter. It, you take your time, don't do anything risky. And you want the level bomber to kind of get some suppression uh, on these back units. And this will fall very easily. It's the safest part of the plan. I have a fourth attack group. So what inspired, uh, there's two things that inspired my new approach. Um, if you watch people play Viasma, there are two issues, weather being number one, and number two, the map does not favor unit placement. You really don't have the space to spread out. Um, just because the mud prevents movement and it's crowded, there's thick forest all over the place, and you don't feel safe actually like throwing your units out so i actually found a solution to this problem so i have a, a, a another small attack group that consisted of an se panzer IV and an se grenadier that uh sneaks to the south in this thick forest region they're gonna punch up and they're gonna punch up and they're gonna be in this open safe space because there's a bunch of conscripts here and they're gonna be a part of a of a pincer attack i don't know if a pincer attack is right but they're going to be a part of a major attack group to wipe out what's in front of Viasma. And what I love about my plan is they can immediately position themselves for attacks. And they don't have to worry about the weather. You know, the mud is a problem, but if you're right next to the units, it's not such a big deal. The fifth attack group, which is the most important, consists of uh, a bridge engineer, Rondorf, Kesha, an 88 gun and a Wolframen, which is associated with my SC division, and uh, a Crotchetson, I think I mentioned that. So, and, and, and you're gonna see me do something brilliant, but the gist of it is you use a bridge engineer to immediately establish a link on turn one that lets my tanks cross. And as it turns out, I'm exploiting a, a move order feature of the AI so that on turn one, when I cross the river, my units will not be attacked and this is really good because they will be attacked. You just don't want them to attack on turn one. So you'll let's watch my deployment here and see what happens. And that is my daughter in the background. Uh, it uh, you're, you're gonna see that. It, uh, my deployment takes a while because I was doing so many variations. Here we go. I was going to deploy my pack, but I realized that I wanted to get more experience with my Panzer Jaegers. I can go into that later, but it's not important for this scenario. Um, and my Air Force is very light because this isn't a useful map to have a huge Air Force. <clears throat> so you could see I was trying different configurations. So it, this is going to take a while. I, I probably did like 10 to 15 different configurations before I finally found one that did everything that I wanted. <clears throat> By the way, the Wolf Ramen moves really well in mud, which is kind of helpful. <clears throat> oh, and Deductor's Mod is in effect, which substantively speaking, the only thing that really affects is it makes things a lot harder for me. And uh, the Crotchison and Cavalry have multi-move option, which I exploit a time or two, but it's not necessary. So you can see, 
Uh, I do have two SE Grenadiers. That's a topic for another discussion. Um, all I'll say about that is it's like having too many Oladiers. They're so overpowered. Um, <clears throat> here we go. Okay, stop. So you can immediately form a bridge here. And what this does is it allows you to bypass the zone of control of the anti-tank, and Kesha just moves in. Then I move the wolf ramen up, and I move it. I was experimenting with putting it on the bridge, but I found that the attack was too low. So now I put the wolf ramen not on the bridge, and he has two range. So I attack the anti-tank. A Kesha with defense plus four is amazing. The, the Crotchetson moves up to block it in, and the artillery is not very effective. Then, I move Rondorf up, who would be stronger on a Rommel playthrough, but he's only one star here. So, I use my scout to snatch this. I know there's a tank here. I'm going to send an overstrengthened um, Panzerjäger up to block... I want this T-34 to attack into my Panzerjäger, and that's why it's over strength. I want to make sure it's still an effective fighting unit uh, after being attacked. Now, uh, what this is is an artillery piece and another artillery piece. This artillery piece, I don't remember if on this playthrough it went north or it went to the center. I think it went, or I think it went over here. But there is a variant where you can send it north to support your, your attack from the flank. Um, I am not sure which one's better, but I'll leave that up for Goose and Bricada to experiment with more. But I'm just moving it here so I can get my artillery as forward as possible because the mud is going to become a problem. Next, this is key. I also have my SE units in half tracks. And it's not so bad because the Ductor's mod puts them at half price. So they're actually worth exactly the same as in the base game. You can see on turn one we don't have mud, and they're on half track. So they just skip right through the forest and go into another forest. And they are out of vision range here. And they're going to help support an attack up north. I also send my Panzer IV that way. And this other SE is going to join the southern group. This is an 88 gun. You're going to be pretty weak in air defense in this area, so bring an 88 gun. They're going to be spotting some things. It'll be worth it. Um, the other thing I like about this plan is it reduces the congestion. So there's a logistics problem with the attack in the south. I have never seen anyone solve the logistics problem. It's a nightmare. Until now. I have solved the logistics problem. You need to have three... You actually basically have like... I have like six attack groups. Four of them are spread out in this region. <laughs> so um, that that's how you get around the logistics problem. You just attack everywhere. <clears throat> there goes my Panzer II. I'm using a Panzer II, by the way. And that Panzer II has 400 kills. But that's a topic for another time. I do have my rocket artillery that's associated with my Panzer Division. And the SE Division has a Stug, and so does my Panzer Division. But my artillery is very light from what I normally play with. Because it's not muddy, I can move my uh, armor forward, so that's really nice. And I have it set up so that if the Stugs attack, the infantry is running into rocket artillery. Notice that I'm really pushing forward here. And there goes the paratroopers with my Heinkel. That's overstrengthened. I will make up a, a point here. If you find that your uh, Panzerjäger gets mauled from this attack, which will happen once every seven or eight times, I think, then just reload the turn because the first turn is guaranteed to work. It it just it's guaranteed to work. So that would be the only time. Just completely restart the 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 uh the scenario. Just save your deployment before doing so. The average amount of damage you'll take here is four, and that is fine. 
Uh, on this particular one, I took three, which is fine. Um, but if you take five or more, you could consider just completely restarting. I, you don't normally take five or more. I have seen it be as high as seven. Uh, so there's some dice roll effect here, especially not helped by the fact that it's raining. But uh, the overstrength is to protect against that. So you'll see my Panzer Jaeger took three damage. The artillery will attack. But remember, the artillery, I should mention this. What I exploited there was the fact that the artillery moves after the tanks. So do not attack the artillery with Rondorf. This is the mistake. If you tried this before, this is the mistake people you would make. Rondorf can do a lot of damage to that artillery. And the problem is the artillery retreats, and then guess what happens? The tanks move first, and that stupid KV that's hanging in the back is going to come up and attack Rondorf. You don't want that. You're going to have plenty of action with the KV. Just delay it. So the first turn, you take out the anti-tank gun, and then you're going to see what I'm doing in the middle after that. And here, uh, this plan works almost every time. You push it out with the uh, Panzer Jaeger, and then you send Oladir up, and then you kill it with a 30 AT. If that unit is at four strength or more, you will almost certainly take damage on the 30 AT, and that's why I have two overstrength points on it. That's the only reason. It's just to keep the 30 AT a highly functional unit. You're going to see this 30 AT destroy units, but you're going to see how I did it. So a couple of clever things that I'm doing here. I want my Panzer Jaeger to be in combat, and it's got the highest heart attack in the game. And this is a two-star Panzer Jaeger with overstrength. This bad boy, backed up by a Stug, is definitely capable of holding its own. The only problem you have is air defense, because it's extremely vulnerable to air attacks. That's something we'll talk about later. There might be a way to improve upon my approach. I'm not sure. The second thing you'll notice, <clears throat> you don't need Wernsberger to like be super aggressive right away. But you do want to establish a strong position out here as fast as possible. Because the mud is just going to make everything super hard to move things around. The 88 gun, so the configuration is this stug is going to move up here. You're going to have an 88 gun as your point attack unit. And then you're going to have your Panzer III. This is just a regular Panzer III. And then you're going to have your 38T covering your flank. And the reason you want that setup is so that the brunt of the armored attack, which is going to consist of a T-34 and a KV, it's fighting high heart attack units backed up by a Stug. And it's as ideal a scenario as you can get. Notice there's no Panzer IVs in this attack group. You don't want them there. All of my Panzer IVs are concentrated in the middle. And why are they concentrated in the middle? Because you basically have a couple of BT tanks you have a scout car, and you have a KV tank. And everything else in the middle is our soft, at soft attack targets. And what are Rondorf and Kesha and an SE Panzer IV good at? They are good at taking out soft targets. You'll see that in action. The other thing is I like parking the 7-1 gun here, and it gives you a lot of protection. You'll see that. Uh, this is crucial because you don't want the air units to crush your core. <laughs> and they will they will absolutely wreck your core. Um, that's one of the tricky things, is how to deal with the air. The uh, Because I have attack plus 4 on my 15 centimeter, it's actually extremely good at attacking armor. So that was a no-brainer. Uh, <clears throat> so the next thing you'll see, I am immediately establishing... I'm immediately establishing a presence here. The enemy counterattack is not coming for several turns. There's no reason that I should waste my time building up to attack this region when I know there's this unit, an, a, an artillery piece, and an anti-aircraft piece. That's the only thing in this region. This is perfect for me to go in and crush them with armor. Now this artillery piece is extremely weak. The mud is severely hampering my ability to move, but that's... I have half-tracks, that's nice. Okay. 
Next, th- th- this is this is where things get tricky. So, what what do you think I plan on doing next? <clears throat> well, I know at some point that the weather is going to get better, and there's a scouting unit here, and there's no better opportunity for me to take care of the scouting unit than turn two. So this Wolf Ramen comes up, it attacks the uh, cavalry unit. Rondorf is a little weak, so you want this to be suppressed. Rondorf attacks the cavalry unit. It's about 50-50 if you'll take damage, but normally I've never seen it be more than one. So it's a pretty safe attack. You attack it, the cavalry unit retreats, Kesha moves up and finishes it off. And Kesha's got defense plus four hero. So, like, he's insanely strong. And I wait. <clears throat> so I have a little artillery support for Rondorf. And this is actually... Uh, so both of my... Rondorf took a damage. No, Rondorf didn't take a damage there. But normally Rondorf takes one or two points of damage. Uh, my Wolf Ramen there was pretty useless. But then uh, the KV's attack was really bad. The thing is, because I have some overstrength on Rondorf, taking one or two points of damage is not a big deal. It's the most dangerous tank in the area. So, uh, so it's fine. And normally, uh, Rondorf does like two to three damage to the KV, which sets up, uh, killing it later. But, uh, this attack by the KVs is annoying, but you can deal with it. And there's not a lot you could do about that. So there's Oladir moving. There's my Stug. I know they're not coming yet. So, it's turn three. Uh, the next goal, so I've taken out on turn one, I've taken out anti-tank. Turn two, I take out their vision. Turn three, I'm expecting the weather to get better at some point. Take out the anti-aircraft. You want to take this out because it opens up the field for your air units to start wiping the floor with the enemy. <clears throat> Notice, again, I'm attacking uh, with uh, Rondorf after suppressing it. Now, normally you don't kill it, so Kesha would go up and kill this. But I got lucky here, twice. Rondorf killed the uh, anti-aircraft. Kesha moves up and gets a free shot on the artillery, and I wiped it out. But you don't have to do that. Normally Kesha just goes up and kills the anti-aircraft. And all that really means is that this gets a free shot, but it's probably not going to damage anything. So yeah, Kesha just wrecked that artillery piece. This position is already collapsed, basically. Oh, I now retreat because uh, let me let me go back. I'm now gonna retreat because <clears throat> I know this KV will attack if it sees this tank. What I didn't realize was that after moving back. They literally had no idea I had a Kesha there because they can't see him. So I was setting a trap that was not going to work. Uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, turn three is best for my plan in the back because you could just put the paratrooper over the airfield and it's fine. <clears throat> the next part of my plan is taking out... There's a couple of things. Let me mention here. Don't attack with artillery first. Attack with the scout then attack with the artillery, then move uh, the anti-tank up to push the artillery here and finish it off with Kesha. That was a mistake that I made. Because now you have to rely on a weakened Panzerjäger to kill that. I It worked, but don't take risks. I'm going to make another mistake here. I actually perfectly suppressed this so the Panzer III could attack. He wrecked the infantry, and I made a mistake right here. This is not a mistake. The counterattack's not coming. I should never have attacked this unit. This unit is useless. There's nothing this unit can attack that won't lead to its destruction. And given that I have time 
for the counter attack. This was this was a mistake, and I took a point of damage that I shouldn't have. So you can see there's this flanking. Uh, you can see I've got I've got an elite grenadier SE and an elite uh, two star uh, SE Panzer IV. These bad boys are waiting for clear weather, and they are gonna just hammer the southern part of uh, this force and there's just a bunch of infantry and weak tanks it's gonna go very poorly for the enemy but you have to time it and they can't move very quickly so it's it's all fine And the northern attack group doesn't have to move that fast either. Okay, so this is my I, my solution to the problem. Is in bad weather, this is the setup I want, and then I'm going to switch it up uh, in good weather because you need you need air defenses on the Panzer Jaeger and on the artillery. You you just have to have it, or you're going to run into problems. I just captured the airfield. Oh, by the way, uh, eight. Let me pause this when we get there. Here, uh, can someone explain to me why on turn one I could form a bridge, but on turn four I couldn't? And what's even weirder is that after I moved the bridge engineer back later, then I could form a bridge, and I, I didn't understand what was going on there. Uh, so for some reason, I was blocked from making a bridge. Uh, oh, does it take two movement to make a bridge? And it's muddy, and so you only get one movement? So an improvement you could make is keep your bridge engineer here because I'm never in vision range. I think I just answered my own question. Okay. And you'll see, I, uh, a couple of other things I'll point out. We don't see this enough. Um, the way I play with Stugs is heavily inspired by Deductor. And I think other Panzer Corps players are struggling to use Stugs properly. Um, I get my Stugs in a lot of combat. I am very aggressive with them. But to use them properly, you have to imagine the geometry of where your units are going. And uh, you're going to see me use my Stugs brilliantly on the Viasma map. So here I'm advancing, but I know I have armor that's going to come cover me. And it's really important to get your Stugs in combat. Um, I'll point out when I did something clever. Yeah, I'm just getting all my artillery involved. You can see I'm making sure the armor, the, the strong um, heart attack, I'm making sure the heart attack is really good. What's going on here is I wasn't sure if this gun was joining this group or going north, and I also wasn't sure if... I've had four straight turns of rain. I wasn't sure if anybody would activate and just swing at me from nowhere, like a scout unit. So if a scout tried to penetrate through these woods, I made sure it was an ambush. Uh, this also keeps this 15 centimeter flexible. I don't know where I'm putting it yet. There's so many planes. This map is tough. And again, it's muddy. I've, I've had four straight turns of mud. So it's, it's just miserable playing conditions. This is not ideal in the least. Oh, I evacuated that area because the bombers will hit you. Just don't do it. <laughs> don't let that be in vision range. Okay, next thing. I uh, uh, Stop. I even had a rugged defense there. A lot of things did not go well, okay? But I got lucky. Here. 
Notice that it's cloudy. That really sucked. So uh, in this playthrough, let's try to keep track of this. Let me write this down. I, I, I don't know how often this happened, but I have had four rain days, four mud, one cloudy. And my, my weather is terrible. And I mean terrible in this attempt. So it's really robust. I, I miss with, with Helmet Lent. That was a disaster. But again, it didn't actually phase me. This anti-tank came forward. That was good. So now it's just easy to kill this. I'm hoping the forest protects me from armored counterattacks. And look, I'm just putting all of my armor up front. So I, I, uh, oh, I'm refueling. So you get the airfield so you can refuel. Notice, okay, a couple of things there. Uh, this is important too. This, you need a mobile gun. You need to move it, protect your artillery, and protect the Panzerjäger. The Panzer Jaegers are extremely vulnerable to air attacks to the point that it is suicidal not to protect these guys. Your fighters are going to be elsewhere. So make sure, notice that I have a 7-1 gun assigned to each Panzer Jaeger. I'm making sure that they're safe. Oh, actually, I messed that up. That Panzer Jaeger should be protected by the 7-1. At least the artillery is covered. That's also very important. Notice all of my artillery. Oh, that's what happened. I couldn't protect the 15 centimeter. So that's why I moved the 7-1 gun there. So the 15 centimeter can move. The second thing is there's a lot of junk, but this is a weak tank. This is a weak tank. This is a weak tank. Nobody's going to mess with Kesha except for that guy. And look at this. This is, this is insane. Like this guy's been sitting here for a couple turns waiting for this opportunity, this infantry just gets shoved into an elite grenadier and gets crushed. And then I have to start de-entrenching. See how I'm backing off because uh, there's a four spotting scout here. This is deductor's mod, so the scouts are significantly more dangerous. Notice I'm backing off. Uh, because I need to protect uh, my tank and my artillery from air attacks. This is super important, or you will get hammered. This is a trap. Rondorf is juicy. So, turn five. I grab the airfield. I can immediately fly. I'm going to hit Moscow on the back. Mm, it's just so good when the double trap works. This didn't work, but it's cloudy. And unfortunately, they did one damage, but that's what overstrength is for. So the KV shows up and only does two damage. That's what the overstrength is for. I'm making sure that Kesha is still okay. That's the most dangerous part of the plan, is that stupid KV tank. It's still muddy, so it's taking the enemy units a while to get to me. Yep, I attacked with the, the overstrength on the 88. It's very helpful, so I can just attack with no artillery support. So this is my first clear day, <laughs> and it took to turn six. You're likely to take a point of damage at some point trying to seize all these objectives. And because it's a clear day, the 88 gun kicked ass. Oh, another key part of my strategy, this is a damaged fighter. I'm going to damage the fighters. Uh, that was uh, a two-star Rudel. 
And then the Panzer IVs against a weak KV are fine. And then look at this, the Grenadiers out of nowhere show up to just smack some conscripts around. And after killing the fighter, this is no longer in vision range. That's very important. I take my remaining fighter to damage this one, and then this fighter damages this one. After you damage these fighters, they no longer attack your bombers. They escort the other bombers. So I can do stuff like this. That's an important fact to know. I back Kesha out so that they can't see... Actually, I killed the scout so they can't see any of this. And there's no heavy armor that can hit my Panzer IV that's active. And once again, I'm very carefully advancing. This is very important. This is a hot spot. I these are guards and they can see this, so I'm rearranging it so my artillery and this and the Panzer Jaeger are protected. I got lucky there. But that tank has some overstrength for that situation. Oh, then it's a clear day. What a trap. That plane got wrecked. And see how the planes are just escorting? And then I got lucky that the gun missed. And they're going to continue their plan to sneak north. The 7 1 finishes off the plane. There's another plane I'm going to kill. The only mistake I made with the Air Force is I forgot there were two planes left. <laughs> so that came back to bite me in the ass. You'll see that later. And Helmet Lent against a weakened bomber, even a Russian... Those are strong bombers and deductors mod. He's still able to clean up because that high initiative. Look at how effective my Panzer Jaeger is. I just took away the enemy vision. This is a trick, by the way, right here. Uh, if you don't watch deductors videos, I, you know, he does things tactically you don't see happen enough. Uh, Soren does it sometimes, but he really, he looks at terrain and he's just like, what can I get away with? This is a thick forest. The tanks cannot move in there. Only cavalry and infantry without trucks. And they have to be right next to the hex to move in there. So I have this really, what looks like an exposed position, but it's not. And this allows me to aggressively move forward and use the terrain to my advantage. And I have heavy hitting heart attack units up front. This is important. Okay, what's going on here is if this unit moves forward and spots this Stug, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And this T-34 thinks I'm going to... Actually, I don't know why. If for some reason this got spotted, I'm setting an ambush trap. That's that's something that uh, Deductor and Soren do a lot of. And I'm already weakening the T-34. I should make note of the fact that I have had a second cloudy day. So that's two. I've had four mud and four rain. 
in one clear day. It's not going to get much better. <laughs> Notice that the uh, mobile rocket artillery is kicking ass. And the Crotchetson's doing very well. It's extremely experienced. It's at max XP. And my elite grenadiers are the ones that got damaged. I was not expecting that. Look at this. I'm just immediately attacking the tank. And that's protecting my... Oh, 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 this is brilliant. So, this has two spotting. It sees the wolf ramen, right? But I'm going to move my bridge engineers up, and it's going to cover the wolf ramen. And watch what happens. Okay, here's another clever trick. Well, no, it's not this turn. Okay, a couple of things. I damaged the KV with my 88. This is a overstrength of Panzer III. He can just go into the face of this tank. And then I send the 38T to finish it off. I have a crippled KV. Now all I have to worry about is this. And watch me switch it around. The KV is no longer dangerous. It's the T-34. So I'm preparing to kill that. You can't see it, but I just did nine damage in an ambush with my bridge engineers. I just want to point that out. The bridge engineers, which are some of the most dissed uh, infantry classes in the game, if you use those guys right, they are so powerful. Uh, my bridge engineers, I believe, have almost 500 kills so far in the game. So the other reason I overstrength the 38T is I know that there will be tank combat. So I'm forced so I, I want the 38T to be functional after getting attacked. And look at that. The the T thirty four just walks right next to the eighty eight gun. Oh, look at that. Another tank goes right next to an 88 gun. I'm just keeping that T-34 busy for the moment so I can focus on what's in front of me. So I want to take out the spotting. That's another elite uh, grenadier. Here's me shoving my stug forward. I'm blocking that infantry. Look at the movement. This kind of movement uh, comes from Deductor. Uh, I've been rewatching his videos. He's just. Um, Deductor, he just knows how to move his units around in really creative ways, and I was using that all the time in this playthrough. And it looks, you, you think he's like making a mistake with positioning, but he's actually really thought it out. And you're seeing me do that here. I've got this infantry blocked. Look at this. I, I, I send my Panzerjäger south. He finishes off another tank. It's crazy. And no, the only thing that can reach this Panzerjäger is this T-34 that's been weakened. And another infantry unit goes down. And I'm protecting my 7-1 here. So look at the armor. Let's take a look at the situation. You guys remember how there's a bunch of bullshit in this region? The only thing left is this tank. 
it's gone by turn eight. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say about that. Like, it's it's just the w look at this. This is Viasma, and all of the protection in front of Viasma is gone. So all you have to really do is clear out what's in the south and in the north, and then it's just easy town. And look at how I protected everything. Very, very well done. And I'm doing this in cloudy weather. <laughs> There's not supposed to be this much cloudy weather. So we're on turn 8, and now I'm going to kill this. And then I'm going to use my Stug very intelligently again. The 38T is extremely effective at hitting suppressed infantry. I just wiped it out. My 38T has over 600 kills. I'm just going to point that out. Look, that, look at this. There's no way the infantry can sneak around. There's no way. And then I set a trap, but it didn't work. There's a nice juicy little 7-1 here with double artillery protection. And so on turn eight, I could start the assault on Moscow and with a, you know, with a level bomber to help you out, it's going to go pretty fast. So some of you are going, oh no, look at, look at the situation with uh, the Panzerjäger. However, this the Panzer Jaeger has mostly done his job. This is not a bad thing because the Panzer Jaeger is getting a lot of experience, and uh, I have a three star Panzer Jaeger at the end of the scenario, so it, it's not so bad. And there's my Panzer II. He has a defense plus two hero, which is really nice. Yeah, we're hang on, let me record that. We're on another cloudy day. This is terrible. We've had four cloudy days. We've had one clear day so far. And then I missed with the Panzer Jaeger. Unbelievable. So now I have to do a risky attack. But the luck balanced out. I managed to kill it, so that's what matters. So this mountain unit walks right into the rocket artillery. My 38T shows up. Blam! My 38T has an initiative plus one hero, and it is amazing. <laughs> and here's me using the Stug creatively again. This was not a necessary attack. You don't need to do that. And now if you look at my configuration, it's unapproachable, except for Oladir, but I have a stuck behind him. And I can move there because it's cloudy, so the fighter can't see it. And my paratroopers have a defense plus two hero. And I now I'm working on Moscow itself. And now my fighters can go do whatever they need to do. So I have half tracks, so I'm going to send them out to try to get to certain hexes. I have broken the counterattack at the south.
And um, then I began my aggressive... By the way, another cloudy day. Let me record that. I am now up to five cloudy days. Because of the fact the armor is mostly dealt with, I can kind of explode out, which is a part of my plan. Some of these guys are going to hang out and attack down here, and the rest are going to move west, or east. Look at the damage my 38T is doing. This is why he has so many kills. A 38T used properly is so strong. <laughs> it's crazy how strong it is. In my, like, I would not expect the 38T to be constantly wrecking infantry, but it will. So the north is freed. Like, everything in the north is basically gone. So now I have to attack the south. And half tracks are essential so I can speed through certain things. I made a mistake. I should have attacked with this infantry first, or with this artillery first, and I probably would have killed that cavalry unit. So you can see I'm preparing the southern push. And most of the armor is gone. I think there's like three tanks left and a scout car. And that's an anti-tank. It, it's not going to do very well against paratroopers. I forgot that this was a guard. <laughs> so they could see the... Uh, what sucks about that is I was planning on killing that with my 88, but... You know, that's what happens when you're not paying attention perfectly. However, killing that tank was easy, right? It's in the hills, so... An area I could have improved was I should have swung this infantry to the back to help take out Moscow faster. Because I don't have to block hexes this early. That's an area in the second half I could have improved. I have my second clear day. I should make note of that. <laughs> Rudel shows up on a clear day, finishes off the anti-air, so this entire position is compromised already. As you can see, I, I'm, I'm kind of like lackadaisically advancing in the north. And uh, th what I forgot about was that the planes, there were two planes left, and you're going to see me get punished for that. So the way is clear to advance here. So 
So I'm preparing. Like, I'm getting ready to hit Viasma hard. And I'm doing it on turn, you know, turn 12, I'm going to hit Viasma. So this fight, the fighter spotted my artillery. It's a clear day. So that's my uh, third. Oh, though this is still my only my second clear day. This was a beautiful trap. They couldn't see this. That went very poorly for the AI. So yeah, that that that's uh, I should have parked that behind the uh, Panzer II. The other mistake I made was I didn't need to do this turn 11. I could have delayed this probably by two turns. <clears throat> Unfortunately for this infantry, this was not an artillery piece lost in space. It was actually protected by uh, some units. And there's my 38T showing up again. And Rudel does his job. You gotta love those Panzer Jaegers. That high heart attack is a big deal. I double protect my Panzer Jaeger, so it's gonna be difficult to kill it. Not to mention that there's not much armor left. So now I can hit Viasma. I'm hitting Viasma extremely hard. There's only uh, four units even around the city. And their major artillery piece is crippled. And now the Crotchets and the Bridge Engineer link up and they assault the armored train that has essentially no defenses. So the Bridge Engineer and Crotchets and were kicking ass. And that's because I invested in them to get their experience up. So Moscow Falls turn 12. And I have a free level bomber now. I perfectly, or I almost perfectly suppressed that infantry, so that was a free attack for the Panzer Jaeger. Both of my Panzer Jaegers got excellent uh, kills and experience on this map. And then uh, my Panzer III got caught out in the open because of the Air Force, and I took a lot of damage, but uh, it survived. That's what the overstrength is for. But there's a bunch of AA right in the region. So my AA takes care of that fighter. Which means the bomber is easy pickings. Oladir is moving up to help get that last location. Rudel does his job.
Look at the speed of the collapse. It's just wild. We're on turn 13. There's almost nothing left. That was my second hero on that SE unit. <laughs> or no, that's my Panzer IV, that's my first hero. And even at four strength, the Panzer Jaeger can finish a scout car off. It's amazing. We're on turn 13 and I've wiped out Viasma. The other mistake I made was I should have attacked with artillery before this. But I was really excited at this point and I wasn't thinking as rationally as I should have. Because I probably would have killed that unit with using the artillery first. So I can now move my units wherever I need to move them. I block that hex. The other mistake I made was I should have waited until I could put Oladir in the trenches, and if you put Oladir in the trenches, he will not be attacked by the artillery. So that was another strength point I didn't need to lose. So as you can see, I've blocked every hex but the northernmost one. And then and then I made another error. Whoops. <laughs> But then it was Wernsberger, and he just killed this conscript. But he was out of ammo, so then I thought, oh, it's a conscript. They can't see anything, so I'll just put rocket artillery behind my units, and uh, it'll kill itself. That was a really nifty tactic. I, re I should have just done this earlier. The the SE should have been in the south already. Or in the uh, northeast. <clears throat> so there's a lot of logistics improvements I could have done.
There's not many units left. I mean, you can see at the end of turn 14, I think there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, ten, eleven, twelve. There's 13 total units left. 14. 14 total units left after 14 turns. That's pretty insane. And this is very repeatable. This, the weather has not been great. We have another cloudy day. In case you're wondering, I've had seven cloudy days and uh, four rainy days. I'm sending Oladir to the back to help clean up along with the SE unit. I don't remember there being much interesting stuff that happens here. Um, let's just fast forward. Oh, it's rainy today. Um, this is fine. Oh, they sp they they uh spawned a BT up north because I forgot I didn't block the city. Oh, you're going to see something nifty on the AI's turn. I have to prepare to force a surrender on the uh, anti-aircraft gun. I mean, how many times do you see people force a surrender like this? <laughs> or it wasn't force a surrender, but I, I totally ganged up on that conscript. Let's see. Yeah, I'm just waiting. They won't attack the paratroopers with defense plus two hero in the city. So, you see a four strength Panzer Jaeger, and the AI is like, I'm going to attack it. Twice. But I had rocket artillery with a stug behind it. It went very poorly. These Panzer Jaegers, it's impossible for the AI to resist attacking them. So there's lots of traps that you can set. Let's uh, let's go to the next day. Clear day. I've had five clear days in this entire scenario so far. And look at the kills that I'm racking up that are really safe. They're safe, easy kills, because there's all these, like, infantry on the river hexes. And then Oladir is just, it's just devastating. And then my 38T gets easy kills. This attack was not wise. I could have handled that better, but I got lucky.
The damage is, uh, I think it's mostly pretty acceptable. Some bad luck here and there. But reasonable, lots of good luck spread throughout. So, yeah, the 38T, God, I cannot believe how many kills that thing has. Deductor is right, man. Like, some of these weaker units, if you use them right, they're insane. Look at this. The, the AI can't stop itself. It just has to keep attacking. Uh, let's fast forward to turn 18. And I think I forced a surrender here. Oh, yeah. This is just well executed, this part. I don't need Oladir anymore because this guy is... And I don't have to take this because this infantry will come out and de-entrench itself, which is great. The other mistake I made was I rushed this. And I really could have waited another turn. Like, this was an unnecessary attack. You know, I lost strength points I didn't have to. So most of the units are gone. <laughs> I'm going to force a surrender on that. So I think there's like uh, four units left. Let's get forward. This is turn 19. And then uh, I can force a surrender on that unit. So I wipe out every unit except for one by 19 turns. So that's pretty wild. And I honestly think it could be improved upon too. Let's fast forward to the final turn, which is, oh, clear, okay. So I forced a surrender there, I wiped out every unit, um, and I think you could probably do it in 20 turns pretty consistently. And I show here on the map, everything is wiped. So there it is, there's my magnum opus of Panzer Corps. So uh, I think everyone should be very impressed by this. And you saw that I used a lot of uh, small um, attack forces to kind of sneak around. And uh, I used the unorthodox approach of crossing the river directly and attacking up front. And I snuck in some support units in the south. And it just works out very well. The application to ultimate mode, I don't. I don't know, but there's some new stuff in here I hope uh, other Panzer Port players might consider. And notice that I'm using a cavalry unit, a Crotchetson, a bridge engineer, only two grenadiers, one pioneer. I've got a Panzer II, a 38T, and two Panzerjägers. So the core is just all over the place. Um, 
so that's what I have to say. Please let me know in the comments what you think below. I will also post this video without commentary, so you can just fast forward to whatever you want to look at in detail. And if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Until next time, Richard out.